Good morning, good morning. This is Jacqueline Richardson. It's JJ Diamond, Jackie Deja, whatever y'all call me. It's a wonderful day in the neighborhood. <sighs> mm. Listen to Power 98 this morning. They were trying to kick it with the teens and see why the teens do certain things, you know, and I'm around the teens a lot, so I, I get to see firsthand what they do and why they do it, and, you know. So, you know, I was laughing this morning. They had me going. Ah. Then I also heard a story, I think No Lemon Larry talked about it, where um, a lady killed her six-year-old, drowned him in a tub. I have to take a deep breath on that one. And the 16-year-old went in and beat the mom up for, you know, trying to help her sibling, which was the right thing to do. Parents, 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 listen, listen. I get it. I get it that it's hard. I've been down this road several times. And it's not easy. It's not easy. Especially when you don't have nobody, you know. I get it. And this is why I help y'all when y'all need help, you know, if y'all in my area. You know, um... A lot of the times, you know, I'll tell them, I'll take the kids, but hand over the food stamp card, you know, because uh, I can't afford to feed them. You know, I'll, I'll get them love. I'll do all the necessary things for them, you know, um, in a group setting. But it'd be hard for me to feed myself, let alone feed other people's children, you know. I had one lady, it was funny, um, in the Bronx. Um uh, Shout out to her. I don't want to call her name, but shout out to her. She she came to me and she said, I'm about to go to jail. And I said, you're about to go to jail? Well, what happened? She said, girl, I had some issues going on. And, um, you know, they sentenced me and I got to turn myself in in a couple of days. And I said, huh? She said, but I need you to do me a favor. Can you do me a favor? I hold on to my son until I get out. And I looked at her. And I knew who her son was, you know, um, quite as kept. I was married to her father. I mean, his father. And um, <laughs> she said, but I trust you. So she gave me all her benefit cards. She said, the money comes on there. And this is the PIN number. And yeah, and the food stamps. And this, you know. I said, okay, I got you. So, you know, I kept the boy for about four months. Um, then by that time, he had turned 18. So he um, went and got his own place with his girlfriend. And, you know, I don't know what happened to him, you know, um, now. But that was pretty much the story, you know. And I always look back on that story because she trusted me, you know, with her child. You know, and she did not want to just leave him, even though he was 17. She wanted an adult appointed to him, you know. And then, you know, here in Charlotte, this white boy, you know. <laughs> we didn't know where he came from. He just came. And um, he was hanging around with the kids. And I said, well, who's this, who's this white boy? And he said, um, no, the kids was like, he just came around and he was just with us. And we just was chilling with him. And I said, oh, okay. So you know me. I got to be nosy and see who this new person is and who are you and what are you doing, you know. And um, I'm like the feds, the children feds, you know. <laughs> so I go out there. Well, who are you? And where you come from? And where your mama? Oh, my mama's in jail. I said, your mama in jail? Yeah, ain't no food in the house. And I said, you hungry? He said, no, nah, me and my friends outside got something to eat. So we ate. I said, okay, all right. I said, well, where you staying? In my house? I said, I don't By yourself. So that's why you out here with us. So he was staying outside till like 3, 4 in the morning. The kids would stay outside with him, you know. And um, he got into a fight with my grandson. You know, my grandson, he would fight everybody. And they out there fighting. Like, Hold on, what y'all doing, you know? So we was like, okay, well, he could fight. All right, well, you, you, you in the crew. Let's, 
<laughs> you know, you know, because I do teach my kids how to protect themselves. Okay, um, so I, I, it's not that I condoned it, but it happened. We know he could protect himself. You good, you know. And sometimes fear is a big part. And he was he was about seventeen, eighteen. He a big part of being alone. You know, not knowing whether you are strong enough mentally or physically to protect yourself. And once he saw that he was mentally and physically able to help and protect himself, he went home. Okay, he got sick while he was over here. He went through a lot of stuff when he was over here. And um, it was funny because they would come running to the door. Ma, I forget the boy name, but they would run to the Ma, he's sick. And I'm like, okay, let's get him together. And I'm like, what was you doing? Why are you sick? I took a little bit of liquor. You're not supposed to drink. I know. But that's what the adults do. No, 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 no. Not all adults drink. Miss JJ don't drink. Jackie don't drink. You know, so these are the things that I, I try to teach them, even though they go out there and they make these mistakes because they see other adults doing it. So we had to nurse him back to health, you know, make sure he got uh, the proper fluid and... um Gatorade and then ate something and then he finally went home and he stayed with us for about two weeks over here okay so I say that to say you know some children be lost because their parents have done things and some children uh just go through issues with their parents because their parents are going through issues you know and kids like to live in a household that is stable you know, it, you know, it, it, it's, it's hard to explain, you know, and a lot of parents don't be stable. They think they are. People think just because they have an apartment that they're stable. OK, and they, their bills are being paid. You know, that was the government's way of saying, OK, well, as long as you got a place, you know, for your kids, you're good. But that, that's not true. There's things that got to be put in place. You know, the kids got to get up and go to school. Um the kids have to eat on the weekends. The kids got to eat breakfast. So you got to get up and cook it. You know, it's not always a cereal morning. You know, um, you have to cook dinner every night. Okay. Or if y'all going to eat out, you can't eat out every night. So <clears throat> children have to have repetitious life, lives. Okay. Meaning the same thing has to happen every single day. Okay. But then a lot of kids don't want to be in a setting where it seems like it's a organization. Okay. In other words, um, like a group home. Okay. So you want them to have that homely feel. Now I notice even with some group homes, they do outings, but they don't do enough outings. I am a nature person and I believe that the children need to be outside. Okay. Even older children. So like I'm one that will take the children outside on a regular basis. Where are we going? You know, um, I know a lot of people say, oh, you, you, you should get a house, you know, far out or cheaper. I really want a house in a city because I personally don't like to drive too much. And I'm one that take the kids to the park. Uh, we might have a night outing and go downtown and look at the lights and walk and, you know, so I want to be as close as possible to the city. The other thing is children has to stay active. Okay. When they are idle, they get in trouble. Okay. And we have to make sure as parents that we are keeping them active, you know, like summertime is coming. Okay, every year, y'all know when summertime come, I go to the Michaels or the Hobby Lobby, wherever, and get things for the kids to stay busy. Okay, um, last uh, summer we discovered the colored crayons. Okay, now every child should have crayons. I don't care if they're two or eighteen. They should have crayons. I have crayons. I just sold y'all. The colorful ones. Okay, the color world crayons. So I take them to the store, you know, and I say, okay, get what you need 
to keep yourself active sometime throughout the day. Then we try to make it to Barnes and Nobles as well to get a book. You know, but you need space for all of this stuff, you know, and that's one of my biggest issues, you know, um, having space, you know, back um, when I first came here, I would bring the kids in the house and let them do the glue to uh, make the slime. They do painted pictures, um, keeping them active. That's just that's just what it is. You have to keep children active. Okay, they cannot sit idle. So it's a full-time job. It is, you know. Um, I notice even in some group homes, they're just sending the kids to the room. You can't do that because they're going to get into stuff. You know, um, you have a time for everything. Okay, now y'all can play video games. Okay, right now we're going to do this. Right now we're going to do that. They know every single day this is what they're doing. Okay, they're going to stay busy. They know at a certain time they're going to eat dinner. They know after dinner um, we're going outside or we're going to, you know, and sometimes I do allow them to go out on their own where I can still see them, you know, and trust them. The time that they mess up is the time that I step in, you know. I said, oh, I gave you a chance and you messed it up. Okay, you, you can't put nothing past children because they always think that they're smarter than the adult. Okay, and that's one of the biggest issues. You know, they think they're smart. They're like, okay, well, she ain't going to know. Oh, I'm going to find out because, for one, y'all talk so much, y'all going to tell on yourselves. So I will find out. But once I find out, that's when you have to change your way of thinking with them, with that particular child. Because all children are different. You know, that's why you're supposed to learn each and every child. Okay, and, and it's a lot of work. That's why we can't. That's why I, I take my hats off to, to parents that have three, four, five kids, you know, and they single parents. And I'm like, how do you do it? Because I couldn't. I just have to be, you know, honest because trying to work and um, be with the children equally and give them all equal love, it's not easy. And that's one of the reasons why I had all my children, um, you know, years apart, you know, my, my 36 year old and my 26 year old, of course they 10 years apart. And then we have my, um, 21 year old and let me see 21. Yeah. He was, well, I didn't have to give birth to the 21 year old, but the 21 year old and the 13 year old they they you know not that far apart but they're close you know and they was able to grow up together a little bit you know and it it helped both um generations you know even though they're kind of alike and somewhat you know they do the same things because they were born in the same generation so i got to watch that and that's not easy as well um when you're trying to coach children But the two that was 10 years apart, they a little bit different, but they also similar as well, even though they're 10 years apart. But I got to love each and every one of them separately. Okay. Until the little one came, Um, then we had to focus on the baby, you know, because she was growing and we had to watch what we was doing so she wouldn't learn negative um, stuff. And, you know, and that's just what it is. However... Yes, my plan was to get a big home um, so I can take in some children and and not take them in permanently, you know. Um, just be able to take them in long enough for their parents to get themselves together, you know. See, the system, this is, this is the biggest problem. This is the biggest issue in America. You know, um, a lot of us has been through foster care, and I'm one of them. You know, and foster care can be a good thing, but it can also be a bad thing. And I'm going to tell you why. You go to these strange homes, okay? And some of these people don't really, really care about the children, okay? It's all about the money, 
Okay, it's not about giving the child the um, the love that's needed. Okay, and they wind up um, hurting the children as well. Then having your child in the system. Okay, I'm not saying delete the system. But it should be on a trial-based era, you know. Sometimes the parents just need a break before they get to that breaking point and they have that child. And they just, you know, give up pretty much or get caught. Okay. Where... A setting for these children to where it's like they're visiting, you know, um, without the government involved, you know, because we don't want to deal with the government. Like I said, I was one of them. I was a foster care child, so I don't want, um, it's not that I'm not, um, how can I explain it, guys? I, I just don't want to say it the wrong way. I I just don't want to be a part of the government. Because sometimes, parents, some of the parents can get themselves together. And just because a worker don't like a uh, um, a parent because of what they've done, they will make it very, very hard for them to get their children back. Okay. Um, by the time CPS is called, this parent, this person has been being watched for for a long time. Okay, and people was got got to the point where they're either fed up or angry. You know, oh, you mistreating your kids, and I see it, so I'm a call. You know, and that's how some people do. But in reality, it's the wrong thing to do. Okay. You know, if anything, if you want to help, you should be saying, hey, um, you you need me to help you with your kids for a bit so you can get yourself together. You know, you really need help. You need to go to rehab or you need to just get some rest mentally. And, you know, um, you know, you have a man issues. Maybe you need to go away to a sister's house or something. And, you know, I'll hold the kids while you go and, you know, get yourself together before it gets worse. Okay, and see, that's what we, we do. We wait until a person has already self-destructed and then now they want to call people and get all of these people involved on behalf of the children. And granted, yeah, it could be the right thing to do, but it also can be the wrong thing to do because the the the, the um, laws and the stipulations that the um, government has and then the hate that some people put on other people because they made a mistake. It's not godly. Everybody gets a chance, you know, to get themselves together once they recognize that they have uh, failed. You know, um, we don't want it to go to the to the extent where people are killing their children because they don't want to be put in a system. They don't want them in a system. Uh, I'm going to tell you all a story. And I think I told this story before. Um, it was a man in Maryland. I was living in Maryland. And this was a big story around the town. And he had lost his job. And it was crazy because he was a single father. He lost his job. And he didn't know what he was going to do. You know, he had a house. You know, because Maryland, it's the thing about Maryland that's different from, from Charlotte. And this is what I see. And I need to let y'all know why. Um, in Maryland, they're not big on buying all of the, uh, $200 sneakers and, you know, uh, the kids do get the video games and stuff like that, but they're more, they're more, uh, focused on their way of living. Okay. Meaning they'll go out and buy a $500,000 home and, you know, the schools are excellent up in Maryland. So, they buy a $500,000 home and shop at the outlets, the Nike outlet. 
and get the cheapest uh, shoes, you know, possible. The best thing that could have happened was for Crocs to come out because they were only $50 and everybody was wearing them. So it was Crocs, Crocs, Crocs. Everybody get, get some Crocs. <laughs> so that was the, the best thing uh, that happened. <clears throat> but in a city, <clears throat> you did have a couple of kids that wore the Jordans, the phone pauses, different things like that. That's in a city. But on the outskirts, and see the city of Baltimore... In Maryland, it's very, very small. Very small. Okay? So, it's more people live in the suburbs than they do in the city. I say all that to say, you know, a lot of parents first have to get their mind together and, and figure out, what are you planning for your family? You know, um, what type of life is it you want to live? You know, do you want to stay in a city and uh, stay up with the Joneses or do you want to try to save money as much as you can and give your life, your child a better living? So that's that's the other key. You know, we all been set forth to, oh, but this is the way they live in the city. I'm a city girl or I'm a city boy. You know, this is the way we live. You know, I just rolled past a a guy, a young boy at the bus stop. And because he lives in the city, what he had on, he had on his Jordans, he had on a Gucci hat, you know, he had to be fresh, fly, dope, whatever, how they be, a drippy or whatever they call it. We get it. Because of the peer pressure of the city. But you go to the suburbs, you see them in pajamas at school. Okay? That's the difference. Why? Because they're focusing on school. Not what kind of clothes they have on. They got on pajamas, a tee, and some Crocs. And that's true. I saw a video last night where they had that on and a bonnet. Okay? I was like, ooh. So y'all ain't even doing your hair out there no more. They wearing bonnets now. White and black. Okay, so it ain't just a black thing. <laughs> okay. We ain't doing our hair today. We ain't putting on no hot old hat. We're gonna put on this bonnet. We're going to learn our education. But you ain't gotta worry about all the weave and the and the oh, I need dreads down in my butt and you know uh braids down in my butt. And they ain't, they ain't worried about all that. So it's a different outlook on life. And that's what I'm getting at. Um, I want to create a system. And not only for the children, for our dogs, you know, too. Because a lot of dogs, um, they they get hurt. You know, Um and it's crazy because I I passed the dog this morning and my car it was in traffic and my car stopped right there at his driveway and he's looking at me. <laughs> With one ear up and one ear down. Like, but what about us? And I don't forget about the pups. I love the dogs. Now, y'all, y'all call me crazy, but yeah, I would probably need a mansion. Okay, and I'm going to tell you why. Okay, if not a mansion, at least a house with 10 bedrooms in it. Mini mansion, you know, um, or area where it can be set because I don't believe in dogs sleeping outside at night. I'm sorry. That's just me. Okay. Um, I know people say, oh, my dogs have a dog house with... With heater and, and, and they don't need all that. They can get the heat inside. Then go outside and play, you know, and then come in the house and go in their bed because I believe in dogs having beds as well. You know, so I say y'all call me crazy, whatever y'all want. But I believe in them having their beds, you know, where they can go get in their bed and go to sleep, you know, just like the kids. They eat their food, take a walk, and then go. And um, go to bed. So if I'm going to have. 
this type of organization, um, this is how it would be designed. You know, um, I would have beds for the kids. You know, it would just be a temporary thing, maybe like a two week uh, thing while the parent get themselves together. You know, um, it could just be that they just need rest mentally. You know, they could be trying to find a job. They can't focus. You know, they worrying about the kid, kid acting up in school, the kid rebelling because the father ain't around. The father ain't giving up what they need, blah, 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 blah. You know, it could be a million and one reasons why a parent might want to give up their kid for two weeks or um, surrender custody. Now, when they, if they want to surrender custody, in other words, meaning, um, they can no longer, uh, care for their child. Okay. Um, then that's a different ball game. And we would decide from that point, um, where if a parent wanted to surrender custody, say a parent knocked on the door and said, Hey, um, I, I need a break. You know, of course, we have to do an evaluation. Why do you need a break? Um, what's going on with you and the kid? Does the kid have any issues? Um, you know, in other words, getting your business. But we have to in order to take care of your child the proper way. Because we need to know what the child um, is going through and why. Um... Then from that point, we could take the child, you know, for a couple of weeks. And from that point, if the person really want to surrender the child, that's when the courts has to come involved. And CPS does have to be contacted. Um, now, if a child, is, and this is the thing, you know, sometimes the majority of the children that come into my setting, they don't like leaving my setting. They don't like, you know, they love it, you know, because we have a good time. We, life is supposed to be about fun and just everything happy, you know, and that's how I try to keep my household, you know, um, as they call me, I'm the cool mom, you know, but I'm not the cool mom that's going to take any nonsense, you know. Um, the cool mom, we're going to listen to the, to the music, we're going to dance, we're going to do activities, you know, this is what we do. And the reason why I do things that way, because guess what? A lot of y'all don't know that it's the law. <laughs> A lot of y'all didn't know that. Okay. A child must listen to his culture's music. A child must stay active throughout the day on a regular basis. Okay, whether it be school work or at school, learning, home activities, okay, child must have chores. Um, this is the way it's supposed to be done. Granted, I'm, I'm thankful that I was able to get um, those classes very young, you know, so I, I was able to learn, you know. Um, and it's crazy because a couple of weeks ago, um, a um, foster foster care agency had, um, I had submitted an application about a year ago. And I guess they finally got to my application and they was like, hey, um, we having a class on the 23rd, which is today, I believe. And I was like, okay. So I was talking back and forth with her and I was asking my daughter and I told her, I said, well, we only live in a two bedroom apartment. And she was like, oh, well, we could take the child. I mean, you could still take um, a, a child in your daughter's room and a child in your room. And, I, you know, I, I was saying to myself, they must be in need really bad if she's trying to force this on me. Because I would like a child that needs to come into my home not to have to be crowded. First and foremost, when you're in forced to care, okay, and this is just, uh, and, and I'm going to be honest with you, I grew up in my family's home. And I was still in foster care, foster kinship. That was the uh, place that was stable for me because they was running me around different places. However, <clears throat> I slept with my, she was really my cousin, okay? But I called her my aunt because her and my mom was the same age, but she was my uh, second cousin. I slept in a bed with her, okay? And I get it. It's okay. People don't have the space, so they make the space. However, it didn't give me um, my own space. Okay, so that did something to me. 
You hear what I'm saying? Um, when I got my first apartment and I lived in my space with just me and my daughter, it was the best thing that ever happened to me. It was like I was reborn because I was able to enjoy just me. Okay? Because I always had to sleep with somebody. When I lived with my mom, um, she had a one-bedroom apartment. She had the room. I slept on a couch. Okay? A pull-out couch. Okay? When I lived um, with my... um, Even when I lived in Harlem, I didn't have a bed. I had to sleep on a pull-out couch. I never... And my mother had three bedrooms. She just never bought me a bed. Okay? Um... When I was living with my grandmother before she passed away, I slept in the bed with her because she had a, a one bedroom um, apartment. So for me, when the life was always crowding, crowded to me because I was always with somebody else. When I got my, I say it again, once I got my first apartment. Um, and got my, you know, my, um, bed, <laughs> I bought myself a bed. I was like, I'm gonna have a bed now, my own bed, my bed. Um, but that's why, because I never had my own bed. Some kids go through that. They have a place to sleep and never get their own bed. So it's a big, it's a, it's a big thing, you know? Um, so if I was to, um, do something of this nature, you know, um, I would like to have where the children can have their own bed, you know, um, not have to share bed with someone else. So they can have their space. Because when you're going through things, you know, people think that children don't go through things. It's a lie. Children go through more than what you think. You know, sometimes they don't talk about it. They just know that they're in a situation and they don't know when it's going to end or if it's ever going to end. Whatever cycle they're going through. So they need their own space. Let me use my son for instance, Nate Heights. He is a child that stayed in his room. I knew where to find him because he was in his room. I told the dinner, go get day day, it's time for dinner. Day day, you 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 want to eat, it's time for dinner. He stayed to himself. So it's some kids that's like that. And then to put them in a situation where they have to um, sleep in the same bed with someone else or um, be in the same room. Um, You don't want them in that uh, state of mind. You know, um... But then you want to know what what they're doing. So I will have cameras. I will need cameras in all the rooms um, to see what they're doing and, and, you know, just what's going on. Because I had one that set a fire. You know, he set a fire with the blanket. So they have to be watched because of whatever they're going through mentally. You know, some of them are on medications. The medication wear out, wear off. Um, and excuse me, the medication wear off and they start doing strange things. So just think of a parent living in a household <clears throat> with a child that is doing these strange things. On a regular basis, and they can't sleep. They gotta stay up, watch this child. Uh, they can't afford cameras. Uh, the child won't sleep, so they gotta stay up. And when you when you um haven't had the proper rest, you can't live functionally. It's hard. 
So say you have a child that has ADHD or um, what's the other one? Um, it's a few of them. Autism. You have autism. You have it's a few different um, issues that children can have and they need to be watched. You need to learn their patterns. You need to spend a lot of time with those children to see how they react during anger, during um, happy times, you know. And some of them need their surroundings to be happy all the time because it will trigger them. Okay? You've ever been in, in, in a classroom with a bunch of children and you got two children fighting, but because this is why we feel that children with disabilities should be separated. You got two children over here fighting and because they're fighting and, and, the, and the room is in an uproar, it takes this whole child's emotions and demeanor into an uproar. Now you're dealing with this and that. Okay? So, this is one of the reasons why I feel like children need, need to have their own space. And some kids are willing to share with other kids. They're like, I'm tired of being lonely. Hey, what's your name? All right, well, let's do this. You know, because I've been lonely at my house. My mama, she don't, she don't do nothing with me. So this is going to be fun to me. What we doing? You know, but then you got some kids that's like, hey, no, I, I don't know you. I don't know what you might do to me. So I'd rather be by myself. You know, so that's something, you know, the lady wanted me to take the class and I just ignored it because I'm saying, no, you, you ready to push these kids out here, okay, and put them in a worse situation than probably what they really was already in. You never know. And then once I tell you, oh, we can't do this, the child is not comfortable, all you're going to do is take them from this one, this house, and take them to somebody else's house. So I, rem I said, no, I'm not going to do the class. I'm going to remove myself. Uh, I, when I'm ready, when I get the house that I need, um, to bring in a foster child and give them the love it, that they need, then no. But then I'll sign up for the class. But you're not going to force children because they need a place to stay because, you know, the parents don't want them or the parents are going through things or they, they've been neglected or whatever the case may be. Now... If y'all want to know, for me to get this this part of my organization up and running, I need a house. Okay? So I get angry when people are stopping me from making money when I'm doing a good duty to help the children of my city. It doesn't matter whether they're white, black, Chinese, or I'm going to say Asian. We're not going to say Chinese because not everybody is Chinese. Some people... Uh, Chinese, Japanese, Korean, you know. So I'm going to just say Asian. You got African kids. I don't care what they are. They still need love. Hispanic kids. Mixed cultures. Um, I need a house. That's just what it is. I need a house so they can do what they need to do to live. Okay? In other words, keep their mind free. Feel secure. Because that's all a kid wants is security. Okay? Okay? I've had kids just, you know, I, I hear them talking, well, oh, Miss Jackie, I know Miss Jackie got, let me knock on the door, you know, and then come knock on the door, Miss Jackie, you got any water? Yes, I do. There's the security. If I ain't got it, I know Miss Jackie can help me out. I know she got it. Oh, I'm hungry. Miss Jackie, did you cook dinner? I'm hungry. You know, sometimes be looking at their little faces like, Come on in here and get something to eat.
That's all they want is security. To know that they can survive. Because when once they become a certain age, they know life is a survival because... Once they're hungry, and this is what I'm angry about, what um, Charlotte, when it comes to the food stamp situation with the children. Y'all don't care if these children eat or not. And that's the facts of it. And no child should ever go to bed hungry. Then you send them to these pantries with this food that's no good. Make it make sense. See, I was a child that went to bed hungry. I was a child that lived off of candy because I couldn't afford nothing else. If I only had a dollar, I would just go buy a big bag of candy and eat candy until I fall asleep. I was a child that ate white rice and butter. Because I had nothing else. Weekends was like living in hell. Because at least when I went to school, I had school food to eat. But when there's no school on, on Saturday, for, uh, Saturday and Sunday, and don't let it be a, a, a holiday weekend, I may starve for three days. So when these parents are coming down there saying, hey, I need to feed my kid. They need to have them food stamps on that card that same day. If you're not going to give for the adult, at least give it for the kid. They shouldn't have to wait 30, 40, 60 days to be approved. If I'm telling you, I don't have any food and I need to feed my kid. So that's why I wanted to do the organization where they can come, you know, and I can give them a, um, and see, this is how Maryland do it. You know, first and foremost, they have a pantry. They don't give away bad food. Um, and not to, sh- you know, to, to hurt Charlotte's feelings, but I have to tell you the facts in order for y'all to get it right. Um, sometime they would give us, um, giant cards, which giant is a supermarket and we can go there. Sometime it'd be $20, sometime it'd be 25, sometime it'd be 30. You go there, you get your milk, you get your bread, you get what you need. Okay. To hold you over until the food stand people get you right. Okay, of course, they, you know, the pantries will give you the canned goods and stuff like that. But did we know that canned goods are actually bad for us? That's supposed to be the last result. But you want something fresh in the child's belly and in your belly, too. No, I'm going to tell y'all the story real quick. I had um, decided that I was going to go to California. Okay, with the kids. And um, I wanted to save money. And I didn't have any food stamps. Um, I was waiting for the food stamps to come. Because, you know, the food stamps come every 30 days. So I didn't have any food stamps. And... Me and the kids, um, we're driving, and you know, it's summertime, heading to Cali. I had money because my son was getting money. Um, he was getting a check. So what I was doing was trying to let the money stack. Okay, I didn't want to spend the money. Only for what we needed. You know, gas, you know, and... Um, I was... I went... To my son, I said, I said, I said to my son, my older son, I said, I don't feel good. I said, I feel real weak because I, I wasn't eating. I was just like eating fruit. Um, I was running in the sun. So I was dehydrated. And it's crazy because I was big on, um, you know, drinking Gatorade. But I didn't think at the, that moment, you know, buy some Gatorade and drink that, you know, maybe you'll feel better. I just knew I needed to eat. I kept feeling weak, 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 weak. 
Anyway, so I made it, you know, back to my car and we got in the car and we went and I said, okay, guys, before we hit this road, I'm going to, um, try to get myself together and get a couple of like packets of tuna fish and, you know, cause we didn't have many food stamps. I think I might've had like $50 in food stamps. So I bought drinks, uh, lots of water and, um, crackers, stuff like that, tuna fish, uh, potato chips, you know, for the ride. But I did have cash. So I got a call and I said, all right, you know what? Let's turn around. I went to visit my son and I kept telling him I didn't eat, you know, I'm hungry. And um, it was kind of late. So I wound up leaving, and my daughter said, Mommy, we're going to die. I said, no, we're not. What are you talking about? And um, I pulled over on the turnpike in one of the gas stations, and the next morning, uh, I woke up and I passed out. So when I got to the hospital, the hospital said, well, we took all the blood and tests, and you healthy as well. You know, you healthy. You healthy. Only thing we see is that you are dehydrated. Um, and I said, I haven't eaten and, you know, really eaten a meal in about a week. And he was like, well, then that's the problem. You have to eat. And I'm like, yeah, but I was trying to save money. So that was the worst thing I could have told them. So, you know, of course, they took the kids and they was asking, well, have y'all been eating? And they was like, yeah, we ate this and that. You know how kids is. They're going to tell you, yeah, we was eating this and that and this. But mommy, she she don't be eating because she be wanting us to eat. And she, she trying to save the money. You know, that's what they told her. So, you know, Child Protective Services said to me. Um, so we heard that you're homeless and you was on your way to California. I said, yeah. Um, it was like, well, we can't let you take the kids. Why? Because you don't have anything. Who told you I don't have anything? I got money. So you see how quick CPS can get involved and we're ready to take your children? Well, you can't sleep in a car. I said, ma'am, I, you know, we, we parked the car. It was 11 o'clock at night. I was feeling sick. I fell out. I mean, like, what, what, the, what you want from me? I was feeling sick. It's just like a, a family on the road. Um... Driving from one state to another. Okay, I, I was going somewhere, but I felt sick, so we pulled over and I needed to take a rest, and I was sick because I fell out the next morning. Well, where are you taking the kids? I said, wherever we choose to go. So it was like, so how much money you got? I said, Well, I'm not going to tell you. I'm gonna go to the ATM over here, I'm gonna pull out some money. And since y'all having a big beef, I'll take them to the hotel tonight. And um, I gave her my uh, bank, you know, slip after I took out. I took out two hundred, <clears throat> and I gave her my bank slip. And I think I had about maybe fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars in the bank. And um, and she looked. I said, well, you got more money in the bank than I do. Okay, well, what make you think you should be taking my children if I got more money than you? Make it make sense. Well, because you're homeless. That's why I'm homeless, because I didn't have enough money. And I'm trying to stack my money and take my kids somewhere that we can be safe. And then she looked at me. She said, oh, makes sense. Okay, well, we're going to release the kids. And I took the kids and we went and um, I was mad as hell because I had to spend that $200 because I'm trying to stack my money so me and my kids can get a place when we get over to L.A. <laughs> so I was trying to stack my paper. So I was like, all right, we're going to rent this hotel room. And, you know, me and the kids, we went to eat, whatever the case may be. But the point that I'm trying to make is parents need to eat, too, because y'all are the one that's caring for the children. So, yeah, we, we sometimes as parents, we say, no, we're not going to eat. We're going to let the kids eat. We got to share this equally. 
We have, we have to learn that as parents. We got to share this equally uh, the best way we can. Because if I'm too weak to take care of you guys, how are you guys going to uh, fend for yourselves and your kids? You know? So, when it gets to that point, that's when you need help. Okay? Granted, I did it to myself. Okay? But there's some parents that don't have a way out. They don't have no food. They don't have no money in the bank. They don't have anything to help their children. And the government took an oath that they will help us. And they don't even do that the proper way. See, they don't know what's going on down here. So this is when the community is supposed to come together. So-and-so is going through X, Y, and Z. Let's try to help her out. Come on, come on and eat some dinner. You know? I'll take Tom over here. He can eat. And I'll send you a plate. You know, whatever we have left. You never go wrong with rice and beans, guys. Never. Okay? That's why I always keep a big bag of rice. Because you never know when you run out of food and you go down to the food stand office and asking for help and they don't want to feed you and you ain't got nothing else. They want to talk about neglect on your kid not having, but they're neglecting you as well as a government. So this is when the people stick, come and stand together. You know, and try to help each other so people won't have to call CPS. Oh, they not feeding their kid. They ain't got no food. You know? And sometimes it don't even be their fault. And it's different, you know, they, the parent on drugs using up all the money, you know. And you try to step in and say, hey, come on, you can come over here and eat at night. You know? But before you get to that point, Kyra Friend Incorporated wants to be that organization that can help you until the government get it right. If y'all understand what I mean, you know. Um, the kid thing, come and stay in. Um, like I said, I, need, I would need a mansion. And then if nobody is funding that type of money, it, it, it just, I don't see it happening. But what I do see happening is, um, I mean, which, what, what, what is in my clear view. Okay? Because I look at reality. For me to hold down um, a mansion, okay, without pay, meaning this is why people send kids to, to child protective services so people can get paid. I would need a grant coming in on a regular basis to fund the lighting, water. Okay, you got to look at the big picture, people. Everything looks good. You know, but when you when you really sit down and do the paperwork, you know, and I'm one that's big on mapping everything out, the mapping the blueprint of things out before it's put into place. It would not be a good idea unless I have funding coming in on the regular basis. In other words, somebody, whether it be the government or a rich company uh, to say, hey, we're going to give you a hundred thousand dollars. Of funding every uh, year to make sure that this house stands. That's what I need. I need guarantee. Once a year, check comes out, and this is for the 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 um the water bill, the um lights, and whatever else. If we need toilets fixed and we need painting in the house or whatever needs to go on in that house, that that money is there. Okay, and that, that's that's no if ands, or buts. Now, when it comes to the community organization part of things, I need an office. Um, I need some donations for, for food. Um, 
supermarket ca- supermarket cards that we can give out uh, so they can have fresh milk, fresh bread, um, peanut butter jelly, buy rice and beans, you know, until the food stamps or whatever organization is helping this person get right for their children. And that's what I'm seeking here for the city of Charlotte. Even dog food. Because there be people that be waiting on their SSI and they can't feed the dogs. And do they have an organization that will they could call and say, and you know, they told me it's gonna take how long SSI takes? Ninety days before I can get a check. And I got a dog. When I got the dog, I was working. I was good. But now things have changed. And some people have to give up their dogs or their dogs starve. So, you know, we want to be that organization when that person call up, hey, you know, I'm waiting on SSI. They said 90 days and, you know, I'm sick and, you know, I, I don't have the money and no family to help me, you know, get no food for my dog. And that's when we can step up to the plate and bring some dog food. I want to have classes um, for some of the youth where we could teach them how to make baby food, how to substitute um, formula without breastfeeding. So they will survive because they have to wait for a WIC appointment. But my child still needs to eat. And I did hear from a lot of, you know, I did my research about the breastfeeding thing. There is some women that can't breastfeed. So what do those women do? I had to teach my son and his baby mother what to do when they didn't have formula. And he looked at me. I said, listen here. This is what we grew up on. And we all just fine. I'm going to go get some vitamins. Give to the baby. And we ain't buying that jar baby food. We're going to make the food. It's cheaper anyway. From one sweet potato... When you're making baby food, one sweet potato, I make anywhere from five to seven jars of baby food. That's one sweet potato. The small little jars that they sell, they sell, and I make seven of them, just one sweet potato. So these are the things that we want to teach. And actually show them, you know, the, the, the new generation and the teens, how they can get through. The foods that they can cook to help a whole family when they only have, say, $3. I don't know if I ever told you the story where when I was homeless and I, me and my daughter, my oldest daughter, we had slept on the train overnight and it was this family. And... um. Shout out to Mike. His name was Mike. And uh, I forgot his wife's name. Toy was it Toy? I don't know. But anyway, they took me and my daughter home. They had 10 kids. Okay? They had 10 kids and they was dipping and dabbing in drugs. They gave me my own room because their kids was used to being together. So they put me and my daughter in our own room. And... The wife, she said, 
um, Jackie, you come here in the kitchen, and I'm going to show you how to feed a big family. And she had two packs of Franks, chicken Franks, which was only 99 cents. Okay. Um, she had a small bag of rice, which is only 99 cents. Okay. And a big can of pork and beans, which back then it was like a dollar fifty nine. And she said, "Cut these franks up. Cut the franks up. It was two packs of franks. Okay, so that's like what uh, you get eight franks in a pack. So we had sixteen francs. She cut them up, right? And put the beans in a pot. Put the franks in there." And made a big pot of white rice. And it fed her 10 kids. Okay. Then me and Shaquana. That's two more. That's 12. And her and her husband. That was 14 people. That ate. Or for less than $5. Okay. There's no reason why y'all should be giving these people bad food. Y'all follow me? There's no reason for it. Then you have people that's organic and, and they're vegan. Now... Granted, I'm a pescatarian. So I eat seafood. But then I don't always have seafood to eat because it's very expensive. So I live more of the vegan life than I do being a pescatarian. Okay? And that's just the truth of it all. Like, last, not last night, night before last. I had rice and beans and cauliflower for dinner. The rice to help me fill fill me up, the beans for the protein, and the cauliflower is my vegetable. And that's what I went to sleep on. And my son got pissed off with me. He said, that's all you eating? I said, yeah, well, what's wrong with it? It didn't sound like enough to him. But in actuality, it was. So it's not what we do, it's how we do things. And some parents get really stressed out when they feel like, you know, um, oh, I can't take care of this kid because I just don't have enough. Or we're about to be put out. I don't have nowhere to go. I'm not going to the shelter. The last time I was at the shelter, they mistreated me. They did me like this. They did me like that. What that lady in South Carolina did was wrong. Killing her kids. But we don't know what she went through. We don't know what the people put her through. Okay, and she snapped. But before she got to that breaking point, she needed to know that there's something in place that can help her. Let me call this number and and, and surrender these kids for a couple of weeks because I can't, I can't, I just, you know, I I can't do this no more. I need, I got to get my mind right. In two weeks, you can get a job. Somewhere. But if your mind ain't right and you always trying to figure out something and trying to do this and do that, it'll pass you right by. We don't know if she had a car. Uh, We don't know if maybe she was trying to get a job. But she couldn't possibly leave the house, maybe. Because by the time she take the bus, ex place wherever she got to go she got to be back to get the kids 
Yeah, we, we don't know. It was wrong for what she did. But we, we don't know what happened to her to get to that point. For her mental state to be where she needs to kill her children. And that's, that's just the point that I'm, I'm trying to make. And we need more organizations that's willing to take on the responsibility of helping these single parents that need, it's, they need help. They need to be able to gather themselves. I, I'm going to use myself as I'm always running. If it's not for the music side of things, it's for Egypt, it's for a uh, job or then I got in school and and then I looked in the mirror one day and was like everybody said I look pretty but I don't feel pretty because nobody knows what's going on in the inside and this is when I tell myself I gotta take a day for me I guess see me at the water. I told my daughter, I said, come on, I, I just need a day. I just, just you come on. Let's just, just, just ride out. And she needed it too. And sometimes this is what the kids need. We need the nature. We need... The love, you know, of seeing something different sometimes. It gives the soul hope. So I, I say, you know, all of these things that I just spoke to y'all about, you know, if y'all are willing to help me uh, get what I need to help these people. It would be greatly appreciated. As I tell people all the time, this is not the life that God intended for us because God is good. And anytime we have to put the devil on forefront to help us survive because they're blocking. Whatever, um, how can I put it? I don't, I don't want, I want to say it where y'all understand it and I don't want to be misleading. Okay. But I want y'all to understand where, where I'm going with this. If man, cause man can be the devil. The government could be the devil too. Okay. Cause the things that they do show devilish ways. God is all about good and life, not death. And anytime a government entity holds you hostage and is leading you to death, it's bad. And this is what a lot of these government entities do. And these people suffer. And then they wonder why people go out and kill, rob, and steal. This is why we need Jesus. Because they force us to do wrong in order to survive. When that's not God's intentions. They're taking God's way of life and switching it up. And then quick to tell you, well, we're here to help you. How? When you just made me suffer. I'm hungry. I'm about to be homeless. My children are acting out. So how are you here to help me? Because if you was here to help me, you would have came to help me 30 days ago before all of this, this stuff happened. They don't see the big picture. 
All they see is what they're presenting. But in God's eyes, it's wrong. And he protect those that y'all cause to do wrong. You can't say you a godly government if you're hurting the people. You can't do that. You just can't. And you got to pick a side. Either you're going to do it right or don't do it at all. And let the people fend for themselves. What's the purpose of having government if the government is not going to do the job that they're supposed to do? In this world, it's all about survival. If you don't eat, you get sick and could possibly die, just like myself. I didn't eat because I wanted to save money for my children. It was a choice. Now, you could see things coming before they come. All you got to do is analyze the situation. So, if you saw it coming, and you said, let me go get some help, and they're making you wait, and your children are starving, and you're starving, you don't have no way to find a job, or you be able to even get to a job. You don't even have a phone. Or you could have a phone. And where you live, your satellite is bad, so you miss your call for the job interview. We all, as uh, uh, the government and organizations in our communities, got to do better. Because all of these people are God's people. Every individual on this earth is God's people. It's their choice whether or not they want to roll with the devil or want to roll with God. But when they're being forced to roll with the devil, that's a different ball game. And a lot of these people are being forced. And before... They just, and this is just my, uh, of, of being out here for so many years and watching different families that have killed their kids, uh, because they don't want them to be on this earth and suffer. And as some people, because they're being forced to live negatively. And some people don't want that for them children. Some people take this God thing over the top. Okay? And then you got some of us like myself. You know what? Huh. I know what God said in this book over here. He told me I need to take care of these kids. And Jesus, hear me. Because they're not going to stop me from surviving. And that's how a lot of people think. But then you may have them one or two that's over the top mentally with it. And they don't want their children to suffer. But it's wrong. Because killing is a sin. But we don't know what was in her mind at that time. What she's been through. What she was afraid that the children may go through. Or what the children was even doing. I mean, luckily, a lot of us take on abuse and neglect with a breeze, you know, and be traumatized 
And people say, well, why they act this way? Oh, but that person act like this person. And they was abused and they was abused. Oh, okay. Yeah, I get it. That's the beauty of the black community. Because most of us was abused or had some some uh, traumatic experiences. So we can all relate a little bit. We can relate. Because our people wasn't raised right and we go through some things. Traumatic experiences. Traumas. And we fight those traumas hands down. Even though it's eating at me every night. I'm a prey. I'm going to get out of this. But then it affects some people where they feel like they'll never get out of it. And they feel like death may be the only answer. We never know what goes on behind closed doors. And I only speak from experience. Once the doors close and locked, we never know what's going on in, the, in the, behind them doors. We don't know if the kids are being fed, cleaned. They could be being raped. We don't know. But all we could do is, is, is treat them with love and kindness. So they can have hope that they can get out of that situation. Not this is what it's supposed to be. Everybody's going through it. No, it's not true. This is Jacqueline Richard Simmons, JJ Diamond, Jackie Deja. I thank y'all for listening to me. Um, I always appreciate uh, when I see my numbers, you know, that y'all listening and y'all paying attention, you know, that what could be going on out in the world and how we need to help and love one another. You know, it's a rough battle, you know, and all I can do, um, I will do, you know, whatever God puts my heart out there to do. But I'm not going to tolerate people trying to stop me from helping others. I will not tolerate that. And I've been going through a lot of that. God is not happy with it and neither am I. So I say say all of that to say. If you think that you're going to come and step on my toes via you could be a person in the street. Or you could be a business without knowing what I'm doing and understanding why. You need to stand back. Because right now, my mind is in survival mode. Not only for myself, for these children. I'm at the point, no nonsense. I'm not playing with y'all no more. Because y'all hurt people's lives. Trying to stand on my toes. You don't even know me. You don't even know what I've been through. You don't know the cycle of life I've been through. And why I do what I do. Don't stand on my toes. Because you hurt me. You're hurting God. And God don't like that. So I will continue to build. You know, and if you want to help, y'all know I have a donation donation button on my website. But I need more than just a little donation. I need a couple of mil, and I'm going to just keep it real with y'all. For me to have 
the organization that I really want to have to help the people of my community. I'm not scared to walk amongst my people. You know, when people say to me every day, oh, well, you a rapper. Oh, you do music. Oh, you need to move. Why? These are my people. Why do I need to be afraid to walk amongst my people that's going through the same thing that I either been through or going through? Why? I've moved when God tells me to move. When, when he's ready for me to go into another community, whether it be a, a rich community or a suburban community. When he's ready. And the cycle repeats itself. Reset. We're in a new community. Let's learn the community. Let's see what's going on. Let's help the kids. It's just because you're rich don't mean that the kids are happy. You know, I heard, I think it was a burpee. On Power 98 yesterday, he was talking about Kim Kardashian. They were talking about Kim Kardashian and what she's going through. Oh, well, Kim Kardashian got money. Money is not the answer to everything. Okay, she may be able to feed her kids. But if her mind ain't right to get up and cook for them. Oh, she shouldn't be cooking because she should have a chef. Not everybody want to eat somebody else's food. I could become a billionaire tomorrow. And I don't want a chef cooking my food. I don't want nobody coming in cleaning my house. Some people want privacy. And the only way to have true privacy is to do it yourself. And it can get hard. So I do a little video. I didn't put it up yet. I put it on Snapchat. Um, telling Kim how you deal with black kids. So she can get some peace. It doesn't matter how much money she has. And I would think her kids is in private school. So who says she has all the money that their money and our money is totally different. Because they got big bills. When the bills come in. Damn, 102,000. Damn. Who we? 50 grand for this? Oh, shoot. When we're looking at 300, these people must be crazy. But I got to pay it. So you, you, you see what I'm saying? When you, you have, the more money you have, your expenses are, are higher. We don't know what she's paying for. She lives in an upscale community. Her kids may be in sports. Well, we give up our little hundred dollars or fifty dollars. She might have to give up five grand for each kid. Did y'all think about that? It's still a process of life. And money is not a factor in the process of life and trying to live life. It all remains the same in every house, in every community. You have children, you have to take care of them. You need to love them and teach them. And the other thing that we all do the same is die. The same way we all come into this world the same. So money is not a factor. Stop making money a factor of life. Yes, it gives us beautiful things. It helps us live uh, 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 upscale lives. 
But I know some rich people that never even seen their children. They don't even know what their children look like. Because they got somebody else taking care of the child. And the child calling the nanny mama. See, I come from New York, so we get to see a lot of things. This was real life, people. Once again, this is Jacqueline Richard Simmons, JJ Diamond, Jackie Deja, whatever y'all call me. I'll talk to y'all soon. I hope everyone has a good day.